Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Give us grace, O Lord, to answer readily the call of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and proclaim to all people the good news of his salvation, that we and the whole world may perceive the glory of his marvelous works, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. I mean, brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in the, their boat, mending their nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, there is something that is very healthy, I think, about coming into contact with our own insignificance. 
I've kind of looked for a better way to say that um, through the week, uh, but I don't haven't really found one. It's a little jarring, though, to hear that, isn't it? To, to think about our own insignificance. But I do think that we all intuitively know it's true. Um, I mean, think about the sort of things that really inspire us. Um, I think that my mind goes, and perhaps yours, yours goes there too, is to kind of um, the natural wonders of this world, right? I've never been to the Grand Canyon, but you hear people talk about the awe-inspiring size of the Grand Canyon. Um, I have been, obviously, you know, into the, to the mountains and seen gorgeous, big mountains. Um, many of us have been to the ocean and love sitting and just kind of looking out on the ocean. Um, there's something deeply moving about those kind of interactions with our natural world. And I do think that it is at least in part because they put us in contact to that reality um, of our own kind of smallness, our own insignificance in the grand scheme of this world. And, and I think there's a reason for that. I think that we are beings as humans who long for connection to an infinite God. And so the wonders of this world, the big, huge things, the things that make us realize how small we are and how big the universe is, uh, these are things that kind of give us a window toward the infinite um, that is God. And so I think there's, it connects to our, our life as people who long to worship. Um, so there's, it makes sense. I think it makes an intuitive sense to us that our own insignificance is not always a bad thing to be dealing with. And it's why I think events like this week's event, the inauguration, um, they have always, for me, and I, I can say this is true no matter if I liked the person um, and preferred the person who was inaugurated or not, the event itself has always, for me, since I was a teenager, been a source of ins inspiration um, because it puts us into contact with a bigger American story than our own, you know, life, our own individual sort of life. And, and there's something good about that and something powerful about that. And I was feeling that this week, um, this Wednesday, as I watched the events around the inauguration unfold, that it was a deeply, um, you know, as always, a, a moving thing to see this connection to the wider American story. And, and that's where I was until, um, and I'm saying this mostly joking, but until 23-year-old Amanda Gorman uh, ascended to the microphone and began to speak. Um, but I watched her as someone who regularly speaks to people um, and, and thinks of myself as a preacher and, and wants to inspire people, wants to use words um, well, and I watched her do things with words and with rhetoric and with power and with poise that I, having been a preacher for 10 years, will be able to preach for another 50 and never quite match it. And she's 23. Um, and so it was just sort of like knowing my own insignificance was good and it was like this healthy line of things. And then it just crossed over. And it was like, oh no. It had me asking questions, not about my own insignificance, but like, what am I even doing? Like, what is the point? Um, and, and so that can get unhealthy, right? We get, there's a healthy way of being in, in contact with your own kind of smallness. And then there's the kind of despairing way. Again, I'm mostly joking, but only mostly. Um, there is a little bit of that, and we've all encountered that at some point. That point where we, where we witness something going on or we realize, you know, something about our limits, something about our failures, something about the way that we just aren't quite enough, something about the way that we just don't feel like we measure up. And it does a little bit of a number on us. And so it's in that sort of feeling, in that mode or that mood that I began really to reflect on today's gospel. And it confronted me, this gospel did. It confronted me in a couple of ways. First of all, these are the very first disciples Jesus is calling. That's the story that we get. It's the beginning of Mark's gospel. Jesus is just beginning his work, and he is just calling the first folks who he wants to follow him. And to whom does that call go? We say this all the time, but it bears repeating. Jesus, when he begins his movement, does not call the most powerful people, the ultra-wealthy, 
the, you know, the uber holy, the super educated. It's not those are not the people that Jesus calls. Instead, it comes to those who are there. It comes to those who are present. It comes to those who hear his voice. And as it turns out, those people, again, are not the best, the brightest, the bravest, the boldest, the wealthiest, the most powerful, or even the holiest. It's a couple of very ordinary fishermen. Simon and Andrew, James and John. They hear his voice, and they follow him. So that's the who, and the second is when the call comes. When this call of Jesus comes, it does not come during a religious revival. They're not at a kind of first century tent meeting or something like that, getting all worked up in the spirit. That is not where the disciples are when they hear the call. They're not at some kind of prayer meeting where they're being very holy and they're doing all kinds of very holy things to help them hear the voice of Jesus. They're not in some, goodness knows, some long-term planning committee at their church that's not where the voice of Jesus shows up. Not that Jesus doesn't show up in long-term planning committees as matter. It's not as the disciples pour over some ancient religious tome looking for wisdom. That's not when Jesus shows up. It is when they are in their very ordinary workplace, right? They're in their boat. That is their office. That is where they live most of their days. That is where they spend most of their days. Uh, they are doing the very ordinary work of mending nets. That does not sound like a terribly interesting thing to be doing. That does not sound like a terribly interesting place to be. But that is where Jesus finds them. It is in the ordinary, in the mundane, and I think I would even have to say in the boring rhythms of the life of a fisherman. That is when Jesus calls to them. That is how Jesus calls them. So we've heard all this before. I know that. This is not a new story um, for any of us. But we need to hear it again. Because we live in a world that is centered on the high, the mighty, the holy, the celebrity, almost a worship of those who dwell in those kind of spheres. That's the world we live in. And we need to be reminded who heard that first call. We are not the heirs this morning of the strongest, the mightiest, the wealthiest, the most powerful, again, or even the holiest. Our forebears as disciples of Jesus are not first any of those people. We are heirs of the fishermen who are willing to blunder ahead and follow Jesus. And trust me, they blunder. In Mark's gospel especially, we're going to read it the rest of this year. And uh, we're going to read it in Lent together, so get excited about that. But through Mark's gospel, one of the absolute themes is that these disciples who Jesus calls first never quite get it right. They blunder and stumble and tumble the whole way forward, all the way through the end of the gospel. And that is whose footsteps we follow in. Not the ones who have it all together, the high, the mighty, the celebrity, the best and the brightest. We follow these fishermen who are following Jesus. We need that reminder that the call also isn't waiting for the right time. The call of Jesus is not waiting for you to sit through enough church services so you can hear his voice. The call of Jesus isn't waiting for you to get smarter, more holy, uh, more prayerful. That's not what the call of Jesus is waiting for. The call of Jesus is not waiting for the time in your life when it's going to make perfect sense. Again, these are men sitting in their office, sitting in their source of livelihood, sitting at their way that they earn their living, and that's where Jesus calls them. So Jesus isn't waiting until it makes perfect sense in the rhythm of your life. Jesus calls us now. Jesus calls you now. 
whenever you are willing to open yourself up to hear it, whenever I am willing to open myself up to hear it, that is the time that Jesus calls. In the mundane, in the ordinary, and even, I have to say, in the boring rhythms of our life, that is where we hear the voice of Jesus. So whether you this morning are someone with the talent and the grace and the power of someone like Amanda Gorman, and I'm certain some of you are, I'm also certain I'm not one of them. So whether that is you, whether you are a very ordinary fisherman plodding away at your daily work, or whether you're somewhere in between, which is probably where most of us fall, the call is coming for you. The call is coming to you this morning. With all we are, with all that we have, even in all the ways that we are limited and not quite there and incomplete and that we don't quite measure up, the call is there for us to listen for Jesus. The one who is always calling us, come, follow me. And our job, our first job as Christians is just to make that simple blundering step to with all that we have all that all, with all that we have and with all that we are to blunder forward in the course of our days our ordinary days our ordinary lives hear his call and answer when wherever he leads you amen We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Brian, our bishop, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for Joe, our president, the Congress and the Supreme Court, for Bill, our governor, and Andy, our mayor. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. We pray for the poor and the homeless. We pray for the sick. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. 
we remember those who have died, give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and for the needs of others. Almighty and merciful God, in your goodness keep us, we pray, from all things that may hurt us, that we, being ready both in mind and body, may accomplish with free hearts those things which belong to your purpose. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. It is good to worship with you, friends. God's peace be uh, with and among all of you. Uh, thank you for your presence here today and your prayers. Um, we uh, don't have any major announcements that we don't already kind of, uh, we haven't made in other ways, but do be on the lookout for announcements about our Lenten program, which will be um, coming up, as well as plans for our um, Shrove Tuesday and Ash Wednesday plans, which obviously are gonna look a little bit different this year, um, but we think we have some good ideas um, for us. Ash Wednesday, we will offer in-person worship, We're trying to find exactly where that is. Because it's a Wednesday, there's a lot of traffic here, and so our normal outdoor spot may not be the best spot. So I think I know where that's gonna be, but I will not fully announce that just yet um, as I'm, I'm hammering out those plans. But there will be some in-person offerings as well as a um, pre-recorded uh, offering to, to, uh, for, for, to begin our, our Holy Lenten journey. Also be on the lookout for our Lenten program. Uh, and and uh, I mentioned we're going to be reading Mark together. Um, and we've really started working on that in earnest this week. So you will get some more information about that. But I think that's going to be a, um, a, a really great way to uh, hone in on the story of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection um, as we begin our Lenten journey. Again, it is... Good to worship with you all uh, this day and to to be together um, please be in touch with us um, our emails are here that's the best way to get in touch with us um, on the bulletin for this service and um, if you need to get in touch with us for any reason please please um, feel free to send us an email which again are on the the back page of the bulletin and now as our savior christ has taught us we are bold to say our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you, that your lives may be a light to the world. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.